The point about all this technological pizzazz isn't the gee whiz high tech stuff. It's the secondary effects of using it. Take, say, what this chip could do to change the pattern of work. With this, you could have telecommuting. That's where you work at home from a screen and you never go into the office. Great. No more rush hour. But what does that do to the public transportation system and the taxes it uses? Or to the car manufacturers and their workers' jobs and the rest of the economy that depends on their output? Or to the concept of the city itself with its support systems and businesses? Or to the downtown property values where maybe your pension funds invested? Not to speak of working at home day in, day out and what that might do to a marriage. And what do you get out of work when it's only you? What would be the effect of isolating and fragmenting the community like that from just one application of this microchip? And every innovation modifies life like that. And our culture's been doing it for a thousand years. That's the way we are. And it shows. Look at any western city and you'll see a culture trying to come to terms with constant change. Look at the detail of your hometown, or this place, and you see the way people saw things in the past, and how different their views were to ours. You can still see those attitudes because of what they left behind them. Some of those past views lasted long enough and were so certain of themselves that they left behind really major bits of evidence of what they thought was important. Look at this, for instance. 19th century San Francisco built churches and believed in heroes. How many statues do we build to honor great men today? And look at the public buildings of the period, almost imperial. And they obviously didn't think things were going to change much or they wouldn't have built like this for a view that obviously thought it would last as long as the Greeks did. Today, power lies with the quick fix, with the marketplace and big business. And where once a home was a house, today it's a box in a skyscraper. We've gone from this way of looking at things to this in a generation. Now people work at night because somewhere else on the planet it's not night. Train 238 Central. Uh, that's 10 your route is coming up. I'm receiving the... Uh... The public transit system exists to deliver millions of people to their work every day, like an extension of the production line process that runs the modern world and that everybody has to fit into, and that changed the meaning of work 200 years ago when it first happened. Life now is working to buy this year's model because last year's is last year's. and welcome to the absolute ultimate radio program. And everywhere, freeways, expressways, throughways, all to make it easier for everybody to go places faster and in greater comfort than they were able to only yesterday. We live caught between more and more change and less and less time to adapt to it. We believe in the right of the individual to do his thing. But at the same time, we change what that thing is all the time. So, this is what questioning has brought us. If we are what we know, then what we are in the modern West is unsure about how long it'll be before what we know is out of date. You see how a culture reveals itself by what it does. All that evidence about ours down there you can read it like a book, and in our case, the message you get is that the only constant in life is change. Not just in the physical shape of the world around, in standards, attitudes, ethics, values, morals, all shifting. The inevitable end product of that Greek rationalism I talked about earlier is all around you. It's our world of here today and gone tomorrow. 